everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Great Full Anglers. I'm John Bondy. And I'm Big John. Hey Ben. Oh, everything's good, buddy. Everything's good. He's not really taller than me, guys. He just he grabs a taller stool every time just so he can look like he towers over me Man, a little bit here. You've got about a foot on me if we stood up. We're structurally built a little bit different, aren't we? You're vertically challenged? No, I'm vertically <laughs> challenged. <laughs> and I'm a little wider. <laughs> we make a good combo. There we go. I was out the last couple of days musky fishing. I found the water to be about 55 and a half degrees, so it's really coming down. Uh, the guys walleye fishing have been pounding them. Yeah, pounding well, lots them. of walleye. I mean, I if you just do a little search on the internet, you'll see reports. Guys were uh, uh, between both bridges, um, up on the American side behind Peach Island. Um, if the if the wind's good enough for you to get out and hold the boat. You can catch them good. They're really catching them right now. Yeah, everything's definitely starting to heat up. Uh, today, guys, we, we're, we're kind of ha- going to have a cool little episode of uh, some of John's uh, success over the years with plastics, uh, building plastics, and also some of his failures along the way. There's a lot. <laughs> I don't know about that. You, you, you've created some pretty cool stuff over the years, but yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure there is, but... Before we get into that, John, um, how did you get started into it? Like, like, you know, for for years, uh, Johnny's always found a way uh, to to make his life happen out of the fishing industry, and and there, he, there's a lot of people who doubted him uh, back in the day, and, and and always told him that it, it's tough as a young angler to to make it. Uh, fishing, but you you seem to have done it. You well, don't know anything else, really, other is than tough. fishing. You know they were right. It is tough. Yeah, but if you you know if you're hard headed like I was, you could do it. Been, yeah, this this is this is a uh, uh, this goes way back. We're going to talk about some of the baits that I first made, and uh, you know you see a lot of the baits that I sell that are are catching fish, but you, what you don't see is many many failures over the years. I started making baits probably in in the late 80s. These are some of the first two baits I ever made. This crawfish, we caught so many fish on this simple crawfish that I kind of carved out. Um, This was the the first mold I ever made. It's made (laughs) out of rubber, but this was this is the first thing I ever made. This this lure here is at least 35 years old. So you can see when he started making plastics, guys, he had nothing to do with walleye. It was all bass, 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 eh? bass yeah. fishing. Yeah. Now, now, did did you did you ever catch a fish on your first one? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> this color I still make. It's called wow. sand. Look at that. Yeah. Eh? But uh, this craw, I want to bring that thing back with my new injection process. At some point, we're going to bring the craw back. But, uh, you know, we, we, I got a lot of lures out there in the market now, but some of the things that you've never seen before, I'm going to show you some of the disasters that I spent hours of, of, of cursing and, and just trying to just But before you do, John, right, you know? b- before you do, I just, uh, I'm sure everybody wants to know, and, and, and I'm really curious, what made you decide to start making a musky bait in a soft plastic like i know other people have probably done it and stuff but what what said to john bondy i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a, a bondy bait well we started jigging for musky and uh, to be honest with you this was probably 25 years ago if there would have been something on the market that would have done what i needed it to do there would have been no bondy bait but um you know there was a vacuum in the market and so i just designed this big jig and it worked right off the bat and i've i've sold yeah because there was nothing lot. there was nothing there like what no. you wanted no like there there was there was twister tails and and they worked too with big jig heads and stuff but there was nothing there was nothing everything tangled or everything you wanted everything tangled or everything had a bad hooking ratio and so i just designed this thing and kept it a secret for a few years and next thing you know it's it's blown up you can it, it's crazy how many I've sold. I, I remember you telling me that when you used to jig the river when you first started, you laid in bed at night and you thought, "Wow, should I, should I tell people about this or should I just just keep, keep it doing myself. it myself?" <laughs> but I tell you uh, what, now that I think about the first lure I ever made. We uh, I made like a a suic type jerk bait. I cut a piece of a hockey stick. Wow. I had a hockey stick piece about this big. I did it at my friend's house, and the only 
paint we had was fluorescent orange can of paint in his shed so we <laughs> painted this thing fluorescent orange i'm not sure i ever caught a fish on it but that that probably set the course i wish i still had that thing probably was, polluted the river with the enamel paint no <laughs> that thing though that thing probably set the set set my mind going on making baits yeah um i also made a bait one time that was uh like a prop bait a little prop bait for for bass and i remember uh i took it down to the water about four in the morning i carved this thing out of cedar i took it down to the water uh on st Clair about four in the morning one day and caught a walleye from really? shore on the surface bait that was the only walleye i've ever caught on the surface was on this little prop bait next thing you know yeah. you, you were you were carving every day after that right, but not everything <laughs> not everything works out not everything works out. I've spent. No, you're gonna and, you're gonna show us some of the things that have worked and haven't worked over the years. And when I say I spent thousands of dollars, uh, I that'd be putting it lightly on wow. on stuff that I've worked on. This thing here, I thought I could make a <clears throat> I thought I could make a bait near the surface with this prop on it, and that it would gurgle on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just sunk like a rock. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks so, like a lot of aluminum it's there. Too, it's too much weight, too yeah. much weight. I don't know, that might come back. It's got a propeller-type shape to it. It really spun, but it didn't gurgle, and it sunk. This thing here... I remember when remember you Remember the story it. of this? Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is 24 <laughs> inches long. This big bait is my Bondi Magnum with a St. Clair grub on the back. Wow. And I was getting ready to go on a trip one morning. I was here like 5 in the morning, and I put this thing together, and um, I started jigging it, and it would it would constantly tangle on itself. But it's a 24-inch bait, so I'm like... Just to put it in perspective, guys, how long is this bait here, John? That's 12 inches. 12 inches. Look at that. Look yeah. at that, eh? That's so anyways, amazing. I took this out, and I started jigging the river. And would you not... You would not believe I caught about a 49-incher on this thing. Wow. But I could only jig it about four or five times, and then it would all get tangled. So they had to fit. They had to bite it pretty quick. <laughs> but, uh, boy, that, there's guys up north for lake trout on that that would use that all day long. Maybe if I could figure out a way to make it not tangle. I got a nice buzzer. That's kind of cool looking. Yeah. I'm really, did that work? or Sort of. Sort of? Sort of. The problem is these things don't spin properly. Yeah. Um, that's a bait that, this one here is a bait that I've, it's a big thick sucker. I got a mold for it. I've never put it into production. Um, but yeah, top water. Kind of Didn't cool. work. <laughs> oh, I, I How about see. this one? There's Look another one. Look at the size of those Little blades. Double, <laughs> like 12s. Jeez. Get them things spinning. That looks like it might work though. It. I thought it was going to be great, but it, it when I reeled it in, it just did this. Oh, oh no! You know, so I don't know. That yeah. might make a comeback one day. I don't know how it would be tough to fit in a container, but uh, if that yeah. don't look like a pile of shad across the top, I don't know what did. <clears throat> what else you got going there, Johnny? It's got some cool stuff, man. There's one I'm really looking at right now. This one here, I Not thought I, I wanted to make. <laughs> I wanted to make. Uh, like a pulsating jellyfish. So when you Look at that. when you pulled it and stopped, then it would do like a jellyfish. But uh, again, when you're making lures, so much of it is getting the proper balance. Yeah. The internal structure, the internal lead and everything. And this thing just did that in how, the water. How many ounces of lead you got <clears> in that thing? I couldn't even tell you, but probably not enough because if you want a lure to not roll, you gotta put a lot of lead in the belly. You know, and this thing, I don't know, a single hook, it would tangle on the tails a lot. See, it's not easy to bait build, guys. It like is everything, not. everything is engineered, you know, like, yeah, I mean, you've done a ton of testing before you put anything out on your shelves. This uh, thing here was look at that. one of the most unique things I've made. So I had one of these on each of these. It's like a, like a carnival in the sea. So uh, I had this under a big sucker float. Yeah. And so when you lift and drop this thing, these things darted around like this. So I had, so it was like a school of these things darting around. And, uh, you know, I, I used it quite a bit, but I never got a fish on Is it. Is that why you had the single hook? Because you're only allowed so many hooks? Right. Or? Yeah, I got so you. So it's kind of like, it's not really an Alabama rig. It's kind of like just like a kind of some kind of 
uh, spreader, yeah, musky spreader, you know. But when these things would, these when I would lift it with that float, these things would dart around like this. It was so cool. They never tangled. But uh, and I fished it deep. I fished it like in 25 foot on the bottom. I fished it near the top. I never did get a bite on it. But I it's thought cool. it, looked, it looked fantastic in the water. I bet you the muskies down there saying, "Look at this what is this guy? thing? What is he up to? It looks like a circus down here." <laughs> <laughs> this thing here that's your daughter's hair isn't it this thing here <laughs> really worked it really worked the problem is mass producing it that's yeah. my uh that's my daughter's hair on there <laughs> and i made i made one with uh made one with my wife's hair one time and i caught about 25 fish on it until the hook broke which so, one was better, your wife's hair or your daughter's hair on the gym? I'm not going to create division in my household, so I'm going to just leave that leave that there. But uh, if your if your kid or your wife's cutting your hair, cutting her hair, just get some epoxy and some thread. And I tell you, guys talk about hair jigs. I've been I was using this ten years ago. That's why you hang out at the hairdressers that's all right. the time. <clears throat> this thing here. Now that's neat looking. This thing here, let me tell you, maybe Big John could take a picture and post it closer yeah maybe the, the the key word is maybe maybe this maybe was not it has a weird look to it but this is one of the things i was most excited about it's kind of like a i, I would have called it the shovel head it's kind of like a jerk bait cross with a crank bait and when you it was for bass you throw it out there and you give it a snap it would go up like this and then you snap it again and it would make an x pattern like this right wow and I threw it into so many schools of white bass, smallmouth, everything, and literally I watched fish run away. Run they, away? They, they were scared of it. They were scared of it. It was so it's so weird looking. Yeah. That uh, I was so excited to have this thing hit the market, and I, and I have yet to catch a fish on it. It looks awesome, man. But the way the wings are on it. It would dart an X like this. Every time you pulled it, it would it would make a different movement. I've never seen a lure do like a vertical like this, you know. But uh, man, they didn't want to eat it. That's and sometimes crazy. that's what happens, you know. They didn't want to eat it. It looks weird, but if I put a nice paint job on there, it would. I don't know. You know, sometimes there's been some lures on the market out there, not from me, but from others that that they look great. But they just and they catch fish, but they just don't sell. They look too weird. So you got to put out something that is uh, tested. You got to put out something that catches fish and fishermen, or they won't buy it. You could have the greatest lure out there. It's you know, okay. You you can sell anything to a fisherman, but selling it to the fish, <laughs> that's 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 what matters. Now, you know how many people come up and have talked about the bondy bait and how it's probably one of the dumbest looking lures, and I agree. You know, so you got to get something that. You got to get it in enough people's hands to show them that it actually does work, and then it, the trend starts or yeah. builds, you know. Uh, so, one last bait that I uh, want to show you oh, is look at those. Yeah. Woo -hoo. You hear about quad tails on the market now? Those I are made nice. these about eight years ago. I've been throwing these off my boat. Everyone I got is chewed to bits. We had called this the virus at the time. I don't think it's a good name now, but uh, yeah. anybody who's been on my boat as a customer has seen these things, and they work. They pulsate in the water, but uh, you know they're hard to reproduce, so I, I've just kept them for now. And, and the, the ones you do produce with the with the single tails there, they 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 do the job just as well. Eh? I'm so behind on on the single tail baits that. Uh, you know, once I get some time, I'll maybe get uh, get to making the four, maybe five. I've made them with six tails on them. Wow. So it's a bit of craziness, but uh, they work. Sometimes do the tails get all tangled up with each other? Yeah, what really. you want to do in a bay like that is when it's in the air and you're casting it, you want to thumb your line just as it's about to land in the water. And those tails will straighten out. I got you. It'll lay in the water and you start retrieving. So whether it's That's a, a nice tip, guys. Yeah, Remember whether it's that. a Medusa or whatever slow it down in the air the bait will do this it'll land you're good to go even with like a do, blade bait it doesn't matter what musky bait you have you know so generally sometimes if you throw that cast wrong you're you're gonna have problems if you see that bait doing this in there oh it's the worst and it's like a blade bait if you ever <laughs> cast blade baits 
you suck if you throw that thing out there and you see it spinning which it'll often do in the air like this you know it's a wasted cast you know so it's like reeling in a fish when you don't have a fish yeah you throwing <laughs> in blade baits in the river much you jig them things uh no i i haven't done much experimenting with the blade baits i just you know do the standard jigging hand lining and trolling and and, and i used to do a lot of night casting on the river uh don't do much of that anymore uh, i'm always in bed by that time so what's your plan this week you getting out yeah i'm hoping to maybe possibly even get out today or tomorrow i i know the the, the it's going to be windy and not too favorable but I, I might head out on the river there if we we got some decent water and you know usually when we get these big systems blown through like we've had the last few days you know it's finally the cold front has finally come through usually we get a little stretch of good weather after you know what i mean nice sunny calm you know that's usually what happens unless there's another cold front lining up behind it but yeah you got to really uh pick your days in the fall because it's, it's not always good you know yeah but, yeah uh, so um a couple of things before we let you go uh i just like to say to sean mclaughlin he took a hooking the finger that he had the x-rays and everything up there <laughs> hope the finger's okay sean uh, yeah, i see your back out fishing the next day uh and another thing i just want to say congratulations uh to chuck from strictly fishing i, I think he found it, new employment yeah he's working at hammerhead uh marine and amersburg in amersburg there and uh yeah he'll be uh it'll be great because uh for all you handlining guys that need to get your reels fixed uh, he'll be there, I think. So I don't know all the details, but I just seen like a like a post on there. So that's good news for him. And, and if you've ever bought spinner blades or my blade baits here, Chuck's the guy that paints them. Yeah, he does a good job. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook him up with a whole bunch of blanks this this winter and keep him busy painting for uh, for next spring. Yeah, just just a just a great guy, and uh, I'm glad he's back in the industry. I knew you wouldn't retire long, Chuck. You couldn't do it. Yeah, couldn't do it. Just couldn't. It's in his blood, right? Yeah. So. And uh, other than that, what about you, John? What are, what are your plans this week? Well, I'm supposed to be guiding all week, uh, weather permitting. You know, if I'm here, then you know it's muddy. Yeah. Um, but that's just the nature of the fall, you know. It, just the way it is, spring and fall, you lose a lot of trips. I think my next open day is November 27th. Wow. However, trying to get out all them days is virtually impossible. Um, but, you know, it depends on the, on the customer, too. Some of them don't like the blowing snow. <laughs> things like yeah, that you know? yeah 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 your customers come first whatever whatever they yeah want but you know if you can get out this time of year and boy it's some of the best fishing the fish are fat they're getting fatter by the day um, usually we get iced in in the marina so i've seen it as early as 25th of november some years it doesn't happen till january but you know you can go right into december most years so don't put that boat away you know you can catch them walleye and musky and everything right to the end yeah yeah for sure i think a lot of guys like we said in the last episode a lot of guys are really expanding their fishing season you know not everybody's a hunter right what's the matter with you i don't know you don't know he just You're keeps, a piece of work he just keeps rambling and rambling <laughs> Did you swear? Grace be upon you, my friend. Holy jeez, okay. No, uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead. How about that Chick-fil-A cookie we had this morning? Oh, that was good, Chick yeah. So, yeah, you say, I gotta try Chick-fil-A, you say- He's never been to Chick-fil-A. No, never been there. You oh, say it's my, all about the sauce? Don't go, because no, okay. it'll be your favorite place. I'm telling you right now. I get now, hooked on things easy. I'm telling you. I never had, I never went to Chick-fil-A. One time I was in a, a tournament in Alabama and they had this big cooler at the at the launch and they said, y'all want, want a chicken sandwich? And it's like six in the morning. I open this cooler and I see all the, like hundreds of of foil wrapped sandwiches in there. And that was my first Chick Fil A sandwich. I, I grab that thing and it's every time I see a Chick Fil A now, I'm hitting it, man. It's just yeah. oh, nothing like here, it. They here, invented here, here the chicken comes. sandwich. So, uh -huh. so. now you ruined my Chick Fil A story. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in this week. We really appreciate everybody following us. We're gonna talk about muskie. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have uh yeah, we're gonna start uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ahead of it right now.
Cheers, love you all, be positive. The Grateful Anglers are out. GoPro, stop recording.